More than a mile below the icy surface of the South Pole, buried sensors are hunting elusive particles from outer space, known as neutrinos. This unprecedented Antarctic observatory, called Ice Cube, has captured neutrinos forged by mind-boggling cosmic events, revealing a side of our universe that has long been hidden from view. I'm really thrilled to be joined by two members of the Ice Cube collaboration, Lulu, an assistant professor at the University of Wisconsin-Madison, and Marcos Santander, an assistant professor at the University of Alabama. Thank you so much for speaking with us. Thank you for the invite. So I mentioned that you're both part of this really amazing collaboration that built and operates the largest neutrino de detector in the world at the South Pole. Um, so I definitely want to get into all of the complexity and amazing experience that uh, that, that must be all about. But could we kind of just start at the beginning? You know, what are neutrinos? Where do they come from? So uh, neutrinos are the lightest uh, massive particles that we know of in existence in the universe. We know of the electrons, uh, we know of quarks, we know of other types of uh, charged particles that make up most of the stuff that we see around us, but neutrinos are the, the ones that we know of that have mass, but this mass is actually so small that we haven't been able to measure it. How common are they? Like, if, if how many are just streaming through us right now as we're speaking? We have about 100 billion neutrinos crossing every square centimeter of our, of our body every second. <laughs> so uh, over the course of a lifetime, uh, you have about 10 to the 20 neutrinos going through your body, which means a one with 20 zeros, which is about 100 times uh, more particles than there are uh, grains of sand in, on Earth. Uh, and the reason why we don't detect them is that um, they go through us and everything that we know of, essentially, uh, without leaving a trace. After all of those have passed through our body over our entire lifetime, there's only a chance in two that one of them will interact with our body. That's fascinating. So the fact that they're constantly going through us is just a kind of a mind boggling thing, but they're not interacting with us at all, um, or more or less not at all. What What's important about them in terms of trying to understand the universe? What What's what can they tell us about the wider cosmos? So they're important because neutrinos can point back to where they were produced. So um, if you look at photons, um, which is the traditional astronomy, um, they're great, but sometimes they're absorbed by the environment during propagation. But neutrinos, they can really, like, like we just talked about, they don't interact very much. So they can go through from all the way where they were produced and uh, through the universe. So uh, I think it, it, neutrinos are super important because potentially it could tell us how does universe accelerate um, this to this most extreme energies that can never be reached by the current human technologies. And is the reason that they're so elusive and that they don't interact with matter so much, is that related to the fact that they're so, so light or is it the high energy? What what gives them that quality that makes them so difficult to detect? So a short answer is that neutrinos are small, light and super antisocial. Um, so if you <laughs> want uh, yeah, more details, that's we have to talk about their four fundamental forces. So gravity, electromagnetism, um, so the nuclear, strong nuclear force, and also the weak force. So um, neutrinos, they don't carry electric charge. So that means they are not really interacting with photons. So not electromagnetic forces. Um, and they have very small mass. So um, it's not really so much by gravity either. So the really important force here is a weak force. In, in particle physics, there's something called cross-section, uh, which describes how likely the, the interaction is going to happen. So the, the neutrinos, they would travel a light year in the lead. So that is about nine and one and a half trillion kilometers. And you only have 50% of chance for these neutrinos to interact in this light year of lead. Um, yeah, so it, it, it is a really blow up uh, your mind how, how, how difficult it is to detect them. Yeah, sounds like, you know, as a particle, they could have fit in the last year uh, being naturally antisocial. But uh, the, the fact that it's, you know, that they are so difficult to detect means that you have to, scientists who, who are in particle physics have to de build these incredibly interesting uh, observatories, neutrino observatories always end up looking more interesting than any other kind of observatory. And Ice Cube Neutrino Observatory is certainly no exception. It's the largest in the world. 
Tell us about its dimensions, its structure, and why the South Pole made for such an ideal a, a spot for this observatory. So ISCOBC is located at the geographic South Pole, and we have 86 strings uh, down in the ice. So each string carries 60 sensors. So this, in total, we have more than 5,000 sensors buried beneath the ice. So between the depths of 14, 50 meter down to 24, 50 meter. So you can imagine we just drilled all these holes and the sensors just sit there and listen and just look around um, over the past 10 years. Um, so the reason that we chose to build at South Pole um, is, is because in, in, in South Pole, we have this really pure glacier ice. So, you know, you, neutrinos don't interact with light. So to detect them, you have to have uh, neutrinos interact with matter, in this case, uh, in, in the ice. I have to note that obviously Ice Cube is a great name for this uh, observatory. It's also the name of a very famous rapper. Have you ever thought as a collaboration, maybe you could get like a celebrity endorsement or something like that, or some sort of affiliation with uh, Ice Cube the Rapper? Actually, uh, a previous uh, PR um, person who was working for Ice Cube tried to reach out to their PR team and they said, no way. Uh, so we, we were trying to get a, a shout out from Ice Cube since we, I mean, that's the first thing that shows up uh, when you do a search for ice cube right we have to add neutrino after an ice cube if we want to go to the telescope uh but that's where i understand perhaps i, I got that incorrectly i don't want to start a feud between our collaboration <laughs> and, ice, and, and the web world or ice cube in particular um but uh yeah hopefully i mean they can catch this and maybe we get a shout out from from ice cube that will be a good day yeah absolutely i love that you're already on it and <laughs> uh, i'm really glad because yeah i think it's a natural fit really you oh, know straight out yeah. of compton straight out of the south pole that's what the this is as, as you mentioned this these neutrinos are coming from the very high energy universe and it's uh, unclear, I guess, a lot of what are these sources of these neutrinos are, but what what is the high uh, energy universe in general, and what do we think some of the phenomenon are in that realm of the cosmos? Right. So uh, over the last about four centuries, we, we've been doing mostly astronomy using light, uh, just putting using telescopes that detect uh, visible light mostly like uh, the ones that you may see in a kind of a supermarket, even you will find these kind of small telescopes that allow you to uh, focus the light from the sky and then into your eyes. And then we have developed over the last, last century, essentially, detectors that allow us to detect uh, energies of light that are not visible to the human eye. So all the way from radio waves, uh, we have radio telescopes and at the high energy end we have gamma rays, which are just light, like the ones that we see with our eyes, but with much higher energies, up to about 10 trillion times the, the light of the energy of visible light. Uh, so what that revealed, especially at the highest energies in the gamma ray range, is that the universe is really dynamic. There are things out there in the sky that may not seem as bright to us with our visible light, because if you go out tonight and look up the sky, you see stars, you see uh, perhaps a few planets, you see the Milky Way and things like this. But uh, in the gamma ray range, we see other things that uh, are not that good at producing visible light, but they're extremely bright in gamma rays. Uh, so that revealed kind of a different class of kind of hidden monsters in the night that are these uh, supermassive black holes in distant galaxies, uh, the remnants of supernova explosions within our own galaxy. In the years that Ice Cube has been uh, operating and capturing these really, really hard to get neutrinos, what are some of the big discoveries that we have? Um, what, what, what have we learned from it? Now that we have the neutrinos, what do we do with them? We search for sources of those neutrinos. And uh, perhaps the most interesting hint that there could be sources of neutrinos out there is that in 2017, we observed uh, a neutrino from, coming from the direction of one of these uh, anti-galactic nuclei, kind of the core part of, a, of an active galaxy. Uh, so that could be the first evidence uh, for a source of high energy neutrinos that we haven't um, identified uh, that we're looking for, right? So that hopefully that's the, that's the tip of the iceberg. Uh, just to, to make more uh, ice cube reference and so on. Uh, <laughs> so before ice cube, we only knew that neutrinos come from the sun, the nuclear plants, and the supernova remnants, the supernova explosion. Um, but since ice cube turned down, we saw this a new class of neutrinos with extreme high energies coming from outside the solar system, 
outside the galaxy. So these are from the black hole, um, like the most violent um, environment in the universe. So this is absolutely a new discovery because of Ice Cube. Yeah, it seems to me that there is, as as exciting as the past 10 years have been, there's a, a lot of illusion here to what the future may hold for Ice Cube and upgrades and, and next generation kind of studies. Could you tell us a little bit about what the plans are for the observatory over the coming decade or, or so? So the first step is to have an Ice Cube upgrade. So we're going to deploy 750 uh, advanced photo sensors. So these are the, um, the more cool sensors. So instead of just looking down of the, uh, the photons, now we have this um, like disco balls looking at all different directions of photons. Um, so this is going to be a in view of the current ice cube. And um, the hope is we can understand the ice much better. Um, and then the next step beyond 2030, so this is something super exciting. So this is called Ice Cube Gen 2. So the hope is to have a 10 cubic kilometer detector and currently it's one cubic kilometer. So we'll have 10 times of whatever we're measuring now. That's extraordinary. And it's really uh, awesome to hear that it's going to be getting bigger and more precise and um, sounds like it will be shedding light on the universe for many decades to come. Uh, I have to ask, you know, given that there's, this sounds like quite a big structural project, what is it like to work at the South Pole on something like this? What's the experience like down there? So I was lucky enough um, to visit Pole like two years ago. So I was sent there to deploy some new types of sensors. So before I went there, I thought the only problem would be the temperature. So I was prepared and like very thick clothes. But actually, after I arrived there, I thought, is, is actually different. The problem was actually the, the altitude. The ice cube, is, so the South Pole is actually uh, above the sea level, about 2,800 meters or so. Um, but because of the Earth's rotation, the atmosphere around the pole are suppressed. So they're actually flattened. So that means um, even though you're at 2,800 meter, it feels like almost 3,500 meter above sea level. So you're literally operating in this extremely cold and with less oxygen, and it's really dry. So it, it was really tough. Um, some people more fit than me were okay, but I was really like trying to catch my breath all the time.